Containers are used for background styling and layout. And the most common layout pattern you'll use with containers is you'll have a main layout widget like a column or a row, and that will be wrapped by a container. So this is the pattern, a container with a row inside, a container with a column inside, or a container with a grid inside. This is 95% of how you'll use a container. So let's explore container styling, layout, and then look at some examples. So styling first. First. But we're not going to go through every styling property because they're pretty self-explanatory and it would make this video needlessly long. So here's a 30 second summary. With a container, you can style the fill color, border, border radius, border color. You have two different ways to do drop shadows. They're called box shadows or elevation. You can use gradients or background images. So if you're looking to style a section or a card or any content, wrap it in a container. That's styling a container. So let's look at some background styling examples. Here we've got a simple example and this section right here, you've got this white background which is serving as the canvas as the background to this gradient background right here. Here we've got a great example of a gradient and you can see down here in our gradient options that first we've got the angle. So if you zero it out, then it's just gonna fill from the top to the bottom, working through each one of these color stops. And you can add however many colors you want in your gradient and set the transition point. And it goes from zero to one. And right now we've got an even progression from the purple to the red to the orange. Now, if we wanted to have more of the purple in here, then we could just change the transition point to be closer to this third color down here. And so if we put this at like 0.8, then we're going to pull in more of that blue because it's going to take longer to transition to this red. All right, next, we've got a good example of a background image being used here. And if we go down to take a look at it, we can see that we've got the options to pull the image from a network. So that's going out to some third party service. Here we're using Unsplash. And of course, you could just dump this URL in your browser and take a look at it. You can, of course, set this from a variable and choose whether you want this image to be cached. So that means the first time the user comes to this page, it'll make a network request to go grab this image, but then it'll be stored in memory on the device. So if the user navigates back to this page, it'll appear instantly because it's saved in memory and doesn't have to make a network request. And then finally, you've got box fit properties, which determines how the image will fit into its box. So right now we have it set to cover, which means that it's going to make sure that this image always covers the available space, which means that it's going to be cropped. So there's probably some of this image that's cut off on the top and the bottom or the right and the left. And we can see which that is if we just use this one right here, contain, and you see, oh, it gets shrunk down vertically, which means when you scale it up to fit the whole thing, it'll cut off some on the right and the left. And you've got the other box fit properties and you can just click through them to see how they work. Next, you got a good example of a common use of container here where we have a gradient applied. Let's scroll down here. And you can see that it starts with this white color here at full opacity and then transitions to fully opaque to get this nice gradient effect so that our type right here has enough contrast with the background to read it. This is a very common UI pattern and you do it with containers. Second, layout. Now, containers are not meant for your main architectural layout widgets like columns or row or grid view, but containers give you one helpful layout property. Well, actually four, minimum and maximum widths and minimum and maximum heights. So if you ever have content that you find is getting too big or too small, wrap it in a container and give it a max width or a max height. Okay, let's look at some examples of this max width and max height. Here's a great example of a use of max height. So I've got this notification feed here and we want these containers to be flexible so that the content of the notification can be fully seen. But we don't want it to be too big. So you can imagine if there was a bunch of text or a bunch of photos, we would probably want to restrict the height. And so you could come into these containers right here and give it a max height of something like 310. So this way they can flex to match their content, but 
not go overboard and be too tall. Next, let's look at examples of when to use max width. You're most often gonna use max width with web apps. And that's simply because there's more horizontal space that you're using. And you typically don't want sections to get too wide because type gets harder to read or maybe you're trying to fit in multiple sections horizontally. So here we've got a login page and you can see if we go into our container right here, we've got a max width set to to 600 pixels. And this is a really common pattern. This makes it so when you're on a mobile device, it'll fit just like you'd expect. And then when you move up to a larger device, it won't get too big. Here's another example of a dashboard. And you can see we've got this container right here and we've got a max width of 1100. And so when the screen gets bigger, obviously the content isn't infinitely expanded. A lot of times larger screens on the web are looked over or forgotten in the design process because with responsive design, you're often focused on how your design scales down and not scales up. So setting a max width is really helpful for that. Next, let's look at a cool animation feature that you have available on containers. We're back in this notifications example, and if you select this container and scroll all the way to the bottom, we've got this property for implicit animation. And what this is gonna do is it will automatically add animations to your container whenever any of the properties change. Well, how would the properties change? Well, they can only change if they're set by a variable, because if not, like this border width currently, there's no way to dynamically change these values. You dynamically change values through variables. So whatever has the set from variable icon, those can be implicitly animated. So let me give you an example of how this would work. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, set a property, and we'll do the height here, to that variable, and then update it when some action occurs. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make this container smaller by default, and then if the user clicks it, we can make it larger. All right, so first we need a variable. So this is a good use case for a page state variable, and you can get to that by just clicking off on the canvas here and going over to this tab, the state management tab. We're going to add a field. This is what your variable is going to be named. So we're just going to call it height because that's what it is. It's going to be an integer and it's not going to be nullable. That is, it always has to have a non-null value. We always want it to have a number. So what value do we want? Well, we want the value to be whatever the small height of this is that we want. So let's just put it at like 150 and confirm that. All right, so we got that variable. So now let's set our container height to that variable. So here's our height and we can come in here and now we've got these page state variables that wasn't there before because we didn't have any. And we've got the height. That's great. Now, we're not seeing any change here. And we'll go over all this in the state management section. But if you want to see, you can just come in here and put in the default variable value. And this is just so you can see it here in the editor. And so we'll set it to 150. And when we confirm, we can see that. Okay, great. Next, we'll set up the action. But before we do that, let's just make sure we've got a good animation curve. Ease in and out, that's great. And 200 milliseconds, that sounds good. Okay, so let's come over to our action flow editor. We're gonna add an action and we're gonna look for our page state variable. So we're just gonna come under state management, update page state. And we've only got one variable right now. That's what we want. What kind of updating do we want? Well, we're just going to set the value right now. And we're going to hard code the value to 310. Great, that sounds good. So let's test it out. All right, so here it is. And when you click on it, it animates open. The last property we're going to look at is the child alignment. Now, this works the same as the alignment property up here. It's just applying it to the child. So go check out that video and it'll explain all the intricacies with alignment. And that's containers in Flutterflow.